as you progress throughout this course, this semester, you should start gaining an insight on what's needed to begin a new career or to transition into another position in your current field. You're going to be creating or you might be improving your resume. You might be creating or improving a cover letter. And you definitely will be doing the elevator speech. I know some of you said that you've never done an elevator speech or even heard of an elevator speech, but you will be creating an elevator speech and getting used to presenting yourself in the elevator speech format. Um, all of these things are being done to help you get your foot in the door or to help you progress in your career. When we start looking at different careers that you, you're considering, you might start questioning yourself or I might ask you, why did you consider that career path? The three theories that we're going to discuss in this lecture will probably help you understand why you decided the career you decided. The first of the three theories that we're going to discuss is Gottfriedson's theory of circumscription and compromise. This theory is made up of four stages, uh, and it states that self-concept, personality traits, and jobs that you, you, you want to go into uh, or gravitate towards is based on things like genetics, the environment that you're in, and the experience experiences that you had over time. Again, this has four stages. It's supposed to start at age three and you progress through until you get to up to 14 or over you're going to progress at whatever age but based off of this theory it starts from three to five with the orientation to size and power and in this stage this stage as children we see things as one-sided or another side black or white yin or yang during this stage children start to recognize that jobs are being held by people and not by animals or fantasy characters. Hopefully you, you've gotten out of this stage, but at this stage, children start to, they start to understand that you can't grow up to be a fantasy character like, or a cartoon character like SpongeBob or Patrick or some other character off, off of cartoon. The next stage is the orientation to sex roles or gender roles. And based off of this theory, you go through this stage between the ages of six to eight. At this stage, children start to realize what gender roles are laid out for them and their communities and their, their environment. During this stage, children focus on external observable characteristics like gender and gender roles, jobs that they don't feel fit a specific gender role, they may eliminate it from their interest. I know when I was younger, I thought it was weird to see a male nurse. I always considered females to be nurses and males to be doctors. But as I grew, I understood that any gender could be a nurse or a doctor. The next stage is the orientation to social valuation. And based off of this theory, it happens between the ages of nine and 13. As, cha as children become teenagers, they start to see the value of certain jobs and what the jobs provide. They also start noticing differences based off of job and, and the social status. They may rule out careers that are considered lower on the social status and may wanna pursue careers that are higher up on the social status. Kids, Generally, and, and people in general, as far as social status goes, they may view CEOs or presidents of companies more highly than they view a janitor, a uh, lunch aide, or someone who's viewed as having a lower social status. And they may gravitate, to, they may want to be a president or a CEO and may not want to be a garbage man or a garbage collector or or a, a lunch aide or a janitor. 
the fourth stage, fourth and final stage of this theory is orientation of internal self or orientation of internal unique self. And this is supposed to occur at the age or after the age of 14. During this stage, the person is starting to look for jobs that match who they feel they are and they start to eliminate jobs that, that, that don't seem to fit who they are or who they want to be. The second say the second theory that we're going to discuss is Donald Super's life and career development stages. This theory tries to explain uh, the different stages that people experience throughout their, their work careers. People tend to choose occupations that allow them to expect express their self concept or who they are. And the more that a job fits their sense of self, the more satisfied the, the person is. Now, this theory has five stages in it. And as you can see, the, the theory uses a, a graphic called the life rainbow, where it starts from birth and it goes all the way up to 80 years old, or most people, some people live past 80, but generally it's going to start at birth. Unlike the previous theory, this starts at birth, goes to 14 uh, for the growth stage. This, the growth stage usually occurs again between birth and the age of 14. And you may not experience the growth stage only between birth and 14. So don't get too hung up on the age ages that are being displayed. Some people develop earlier, some people develop a little bit later in life. But during the growth stage, this is where an individual develops a basic understanding of the world and their surroundings, and they start to gain a sense of who they are and who they want to be. The next stage is the exploration stage. This is between the ages of 15 and 24, based off of the theory. And during this stage, the individual tries to see where they fit in the working world and they start to begin to consider the career that they want to go into. The third stage is the establishment stage. And based off of the theory, it goes between the ages of 25 and 44. And during this stage, the individual begins to develop their work related skills and they start to gain more experience in, in a job that they're in. The fourth stage is the maintenance stage, and this usually occurs between 45 and 65. So there are the person has already gone through the growth, the exploration, as well as they, they already established. So now you're trying to maintain who you are in your current position at work or in your career. And at this point, you're kind of like plateauing or you're peaking in that career. So the next thing you're trying to do is just adjust and improve the skills that you already have. The fifth and final stage is the decline stage. And this usually happens after the age of 64. And during this stage, individuals begin to disengage from work. So they start to consider retiring and what's, what they're planning on doing after their work career ends. The third and final stage is Holland's theory of vocational choice. And this theory states that people select the careers based on their specific personality type or personality types. There's a total of six personalities, personality types included in this theory. You have the realistic theory or the realistic personality type, investigative, artistic, social, enterprising, and conventional. Now, again, as with the other theories, you may, you can mix and match the different types and you may experience things at a certain point and then you may move into a different personality type. Again, this theory holds six personality types. The first one that we're gonna discuss is the realistic personality type and these are the doers these individuals that the individuals that have this type of personality type 
they enjoy being active and acting out problems. These people tend to work with their hands. They like to work on machines or they like to work with tools. The next personality type are the investigative personality types. These individuals like to think out things before they act on them. They tend to take more thoughtful and a, a more analytical approach to solving a problem that, that's presented to them. These are the thinkers. The third personality type is the artistic or the creator. These people enjoy expressing themselves through art and through emotion. They tend to be very creative and very open to things. They enjoy things like literature, music, and arts. The fourth personality type is the social personality type. And these are our helpers. These individuals seek to, to have like close relationship with other people. They tend to show a lot of empathy towards others. And thus, they might seek a career field that involves helping, it involves educating, it involves supporting people because they want to help people. The fifth personality type is the enterprising personality type. These are the persuaders. These individuals, they're concerned with power and having status. They tend to be a little bit more on the dominant side. They talk very well, very persuasive, and they're more direct. They're usually the, the skilled leaders. And the sixth personality type is the conventional personality type. These are the organizers. Uh, they tend to follow the rules. They like structure. They like routine. They tend to respect their authority and they're very punctual and they exhibit a lot of self-control. As I stated before, there's six different personality types. You can have, you can be in more than just one personality type. Myself, I'm more of a, I have a social personality type, very heavy social, very heavy enterprising and very heavy organizer. But I'm also, I also like to do things with my hands. I like hands-on activity. I, I like to think through things. Um, and I'm also creative when it comes to solving problems. So I have a little bit of all of them, but I, I, my career, the career field is towards more of helping and organizing. And also because I am an entrepreneur, I, I am a persuader and very skilled at certain things. That is all the discussion. Again, there's, there's a lot of different career theories out there. We just discussed just a couple of them just to give you an idea of why you select or why you, why did you select the career that you wanted to go into?